welcome to Switch Middle School Ministry Podcast. These messages are recorded every Wednesday at our Switch Gathering. Whether you missed it or you're just wanting to listen again, we're glad you're here. We pray this message helps you develop a faith of your own. Amen. All right, hey, grab your handouts really quickly. We are in the second week of our series that we're calling The Real Jesus. We're studying scripture to figure out who this Jesus guy that we've probably heard about before really was. Not just our opinions, not what just society has told us, but we want to know what the Bible says the real Jesus was. What his likes were, what his dislikes were, how he interacted with people, and really what he thought was important so that we can figure out who the real Jesus is and whether or not we want a relationship with the real Jesus. The uh, starting point activity this week is going to be the same week throughout the series because I want us to continually be thinking about this question, who is Jesus? So on your handout next to that question or on the back side of that handout, maybe write down some things that come to mind. When you think of the name Jesus, what are some things that come to mind? Maybe some, some events, some significant events in your life that you're associating with Jesus. Maybe you write down description, descriptions that you think in your mind about who you think Jesus was when you think in your mind. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you go, you know what, I'm not writing this stuff down. That's cool, I get it. I probably wouldn't have written it down either. Then just stop and think for a second. Who is Jesus? When you think about Jesus, what do you think about? Do you think about discouragement? Have you prayed to Jesus before and not gotten the answers that you wanted? Have you, when you think about Jesus, do you think about salvation? Maybe you got saved several years ago. I don't know. Whatever it is, write that down. I want to introduce you to somebody, and this is a little embarrassing. I want you to meet middle school Ryan. Probably not what you thought. This was Ryan in the eighth grade with my No Fear shirt. If you don't know what No Fear is, it's okay. I've been alive longer than you are. Just got back from the beach, got my beach necklace on, got my tan, got my braces off that year, got some big chompers. I was showing them bad boys off. I got to be honest, I'm not quite sure what happened right here on the bangs. I don't remember something happening. But something obviously happened to my bangs, and I know the guy who was taking the picture obviously didn't say, hey, you might want to fluff those bad boys. And then uh, this, these, oh man, these, these, I hated these things. Glasses, man. I got glasses in the eighth grade. If, you, if you've ever gotten glasses before, look, I, I want you to know, I understand that some of us look at glasses and, and we don't have a problem with it. I, I get that. I had a horrible time with my glasses. And here's why. Because the first day I got my glasses, I walked into school and I was already a nervous wreck. Walked into my first period class, the teacher comes up to me and she says, your glasses are so cool. Which I gotta be honest, if your teacher tells you that your glasses are cool, it means they're probably not cool, right? And then second of all, I looked at her and she said, your glasses are so cool. They look just like Harry Potter's. Thanks. You know, now that I look back, she's right. I did kind of have Harry Potter glasses, but I got to tell you something else about this guy too. I got to tell you something else about this guy too. This guy was incredibly self-conscious. Um, I have a smile on my face, but I remember walking the hallways of middle school thinking, I don't have any friends. I don't connect with anybody. I remember walking around trying to figure out. I knew I didn't belong with the popular crowd, but I didn't feel like I belonged with certain other crowds, and I just couldn't find my people. I was looking for people to accept me. And something out of the ordinary happened one day. I stepped uh, over to the side in the hallway, and this girl cut me off in the hallway. And she says, hey, my friend thinks you're cute. And I was like, you have to have the wrong person. Your friend is talking about somebody else, and she's going to be super mad in a minute when she finds out that you're talking to me. Turns out, she was talking to me, and that did something inside of me. 
I was looking for value so much at that age. I remember listening to her tell me that, and I went home, and I just thought, I feel fulfilled. I feel valued. I feel wanted. And I was so happy until the next week when I saw that same girl talking to somebody else. And my, all of that pride that I had welled up inside of me went right down in the dust. You know why? Because we all have a desire to feel wanted. I love Wednesday nights. I love watching y'all come in on Wednesday nights out in the hallway. And some of you are already here. And as your friends get here, you get so excited to see them. You run down the hallway. Girls scream. Nobody, nobody's ever treated me that way when I've walked in a room, by the way. Y'all scream. We're so excited. Yay, you're here. You hug each other. It's been a week or it's been a few hours. Guys, we walk up to each other. We don't do that. We kind of fist bump. What's up, man? How you been doing? But... All of us want to walk into a place where our name is known, where we feel like somebody is expecting us. We feel valued and wanted. And why is that? Because all of us at a base level want to feel valued and wanted. I want you to hear me say something tonight. This may be the only thing that you hear me say, and that's okay. Jesus wants a relationship with you. And I get it. A lot of us have been in church or around church or we're not even listening right now. And I want you to hear this. Jesus wants a relationship with you so much that he came and died on a cross so that you could have a relationship with him. Jesus values you so much and sees that there's so much value in you that you are to die for. And so last week we saw that Jesus, the real Jesus, is the one sent from God. And so this week, what I want us to see is that the real Jesus wants a relationship with you. If you have the Bible app on your phones, you can scan this QR code. It's going to take you right to where we're going to be reading from tonight. So if you've got the Bible app, you can take out your camera, take a, put this up on the screen. It'll take you right to the passage. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open up to Luke chapter 5 like I am. If you don't have either one of those things, it's going to be on your handout, but it's not going to be on the screen tonight because I want you to focus and listen to what we're saying. All right? Check this out. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a great crowd pressed in on him to listen to the Word of God. Now, we have to understand this first thing. This is not post-resurrection Jesus. This is not Jesus that has been doing a lots of miracles or anything like that. The only thing that he's been doing up into this time is a handful of miracles, but he's been teaching. And the teaching that Jesus is teaching is unlike anything that these people have ever heard before. And so this gets a crowd. And so a crowd is around Jesus. And verse 2, he noticed two empty boats on the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them there and were washing their nets. So the fishermen had been up all night fishing because that's when they fished. And so they're cleaning up for the day. They're getting ready to go home to get some rest before they come back and do it again the next night. Verse 3, stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon Peter, its owner, to push it out into the water. Because the back's against the water, the people are in front of me, they're pushing against me. I need to get in this boat, go out in the water so that I can teach them and I don't have to get wet. And pushes it out against the water. So he sat in the boat and he taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Now go out where the water is deep. And let down your nets and catch some fish. Now, if this were a religious issue, Jesus, we would go, okay, it makes sense to listen to him. But this is a fishing issue. Peter is not a stranger to fishing issues. He's the expert in this situation. So it would make sense for Simon to look at Jesus and go, you don't understand. We've been out here all night. Ain't nobody caught nothing. We going home. But something about this teaching gets Peter's attention. So he responds to Jesus with a term of affirmation. And he says, Master, Simon Peter replied, We have worked hard all night and we didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, we'll let down our nets again. And this time their nets were so full of fish 
They began to tear. A shout for help brought the partners in from the other boat. And soon both boats were so filled with fish that they were on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he looked at Jesus and he said, Hey man, thanks for catching, helping me catch some fish. Hey man, thanks for helping me make a, a good profit today. No, he says, Simon Peter realized what had happened and he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Lord, please leave me because I am such a sinful man. For he was in awe struck by the number of fish they had caught as the others were and his partners James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. And Jesus replied to Simon and he says this, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and they followed Jesus. This is another message for another day, but this is something that will absolutely change your life. Because I know grown adults, myself included, that struggle with this. This is a little bonus. What we see here is that Peter obeyed and then he got the blessing. A lot of times in life, especially as believers, we want the blessing before we act in obedience. That's not the way God works. And what I want us to see first off is that the obedience to God precedes the blessing. And so if you want the blessing of God on your life, the first thing that we have to do, the first step that we have to take is to obey what he says. But what I also want us to see is that Jesus' interaction with Peter also applies to us nowadays because it teaches us three things about Jesus. The first thing is that even today, Jesus pursues us. Peter didn't initiate this interaction with Jesus. Jesus initiated the interaction. You ever heard this? I asked Jesus into my heart. Well, first of all, no, you didn't. And then second of all, you didn't ask Jesus to do nothing that Jesus hadn't already done. Jesus initiates the relationship with us. If it were not for Jesus lifting this somehow veil in front of our eyes, we wouldn't even understand that we need Jesus in the first place. Jesus initiates the interaction with us. And Jesus enter in, initiates the interaction with Peter. He's the one that pursues him. Maybe you've been at Switch for months or years, and you grew up in kids' ministry here. You've been here since preschool. You come to Switch every single week. I want you to know this, that just because you're saved doesn't mean that Jesus stops pursuing you. He's pursuing you right now. And i got to be honest with you. For some of you, Jesus misses you. Because it has been a long time since you've spent some time with him. If you're here tonight and you're going, I don't really know what's happening inside of me, but something's happening inside of me. It could be that Jesus is pursuing you and wants a relationship with you. The next thing that we see is that even today, Jesus reveals more about himself. In this one st uh, story, in this one scenario, Jesus reveals a whole lot about himself in this. He shows us a lot about his character and his presence and his power. Who is this man that says, throw your nets off, and all of a sudden fish jump into the net? It shows us a couple of things. These are on your outline. It's, first of all, it sells, shows us that Jesus reveals reveals his character. Jesus is all powerful. Jesus is God in human flesh. Jesus commands fish. He commands nature. He commands people. The only person that can do something like this is God. Nothing else has to obey. The second thing that it shows us is it shows us that Jesus reveals our sin. Peter's response to Jesus is not, thanks for helping me catch fish. Hope you have a good day. The, the first thing that, that Peter realizes in this moment is that there is something different about you that's not the same with me. You are holy and you should leave my presence because I am a sinful man. And when we interact with Jesus, several things happen. It reveals who his character is. And the real Jesus has certain characteristics, but the real Jesus is also holy. 
And the last thing it teaches us is this. Even today, Jesus changes our lives forever. It says, as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed him. Who else is worthy of leaving everything that we have? These guys didn't have a small business. They had a successful career as fishermen. They had boats. They had nets. They had families. And they left and followed him. Okay, I lied. This is not, the other thing was not the only thing I wanted you to hear me say. I wanted you to hear me say that, but I also want you to hear me say this. All right, you listening? If your life, I'm figuring out how I want to say this. If your life is not changed since you met Jesus, you have not met Jesus. If you're not different post-Jesus, you have not met Jesus. Because Jesus changes our lives forever. Now that doesn't mean that it goes from zero to a hundred in one day. It's a slow, steady race. But if you're not growing and becoming more like Christ, if you're not growing and, and changing your life, you have not met Jesus. That's who the real Jesus is. He initiates a relationship with us because he loves you. And he changes your life forever. So if you don't hear anything else I say, I want you to hear me say this. Jesus is the one who calls. Jesus is the one who initiates the relationship with you. Jesus is the one that does something in your heart, that does something in your mind, that just you can't rest until you know Jesus more. And some of us in this room have no idea what I'm talking about, but my prayer is that some of you in this room are understanding what I'm saying and you're relating to it and you're going, you know what? I understand. I want more Jesus. I want this life to be changed. I want Jesus to pursue me. And I can tell you this, he already has. And he loves you. And he wants a relationship with you if you will leave everything and follow him. That is the real Jesus. Let me pray for us. Jesus, I pray for these students in this room. God, I pray for the students in this room who are um, ignoring this. And uh, God could care less about being here. God, are they're so focused on their friends right now and they know exactly who I'm talking to. God, I pray that you would do something in their hearts and in their minds that they would not be able to rest. Because, God, I pray that you would create something in their hearts and in their minds where they know they don't have a real relationship with you. God, your word says, to him who has ears, let him hear. God, for the ears in this room who have been just deaf to the gospel, would you open their ears maybe for the first time? And would you help them understand that you sent your son Jesus to die for them so that they could have a relationship with you? God, I pray for the student in this room who's been long saved, been baptized, but has just kind of grown numb, and they're just not following you, and it's been a long time since they've spent time with you. God, would you remind them again that you didn't stop pursuing them when you saved them, God, but you, you desire to spend time with them every single day. And God, I pray for the student in this room who desperately wants more of you. God, we're not about the things of this world. God, we are all about you. And if you tell us to do it, God will do it. I pray for that student, that one student, that two, two students, however many in here, God. God, would you just remind us yet again of how much you loved us. Father, I pray for small groups. God, I pray for the small group leader who's discouraged in this room right now. It feels like they're not making a difference. God, would you do something in small groups tonight to remind them that you are using them in ways that they have no idea? God, and I pray for small groups that you would just help our conversations to be about you and desire to grow in you and to help us to have fun. And we love you so much. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see y'all later.